Well, hello there. Welcome to another Try Something New Tuesday. Um, I am going to share a virtual wine tasting I did this week. I uh, love that this is such a creative way to safe, safely infuse some fun into your quarantine, socially distant COVID-19 life. Um, I learned so much from Annabelle. Uh, she is um, with El Palio in Chapel Hill and she walks me through the flavor profile of an Italian wine that she introduced me to and I'm going to share the Facebook live conversation. Um, you are more than welcome to also follow me on Facebook. I'll have all my social links down below but for now here's the virtual wine tasting I did. Well, and it it's world. Yes, I love your blog. So Thank I'm really you so excited. Much. Um, I love that you guys are in Chapel Hill too, because living in Chapel yes. Hill and being a food blogger, I find myself driving out a lot. <laughs> yes. Um, but you guys are one of my favorite restaurants in Chapel Hill. So I'm excited. I love, I love Chapel Hill. I actually live in Durham um, and I grew up in Raleigh, so I haven't spent a ton of time in Chapel Hill. But since I've been working at El Palio, I spend all my time going out in El Palio, uh, in Chapel Hill now. Mm -hmm. Hi, Melissa. So Melissa just joined us. We popped on a little early um, we are due to start in about four minutes and we thought we'd chit chat a little bit. Um, Melissa is also a blogger. I am here with Annabelle from Il Palio in Chapel Hill. Um, Hi. Will you tell us more about yourself, your history with wine education and your history with Il Palio? Sure, sure. Yeah. So uh, my name is Annabelle and I am the sommelier over at Il Palio in Chapel Hill. I have been in the wine industry for about six years. Um, I started my wine experience by traveling internationally, mostly through German and Italian wine. And then after I graduated college, I uh, uh, worked as a wine rep. I worked in several um, wine bottle shops, uh, doing wine education programs. And I recently joined Il Palio in um, February. So oh, awesome. yes, I'm pretty recent, um, yeah. especially with the crisis, but it's been a really great learning opportunity for me because this is the first time that I've been in a serious restaurant, but I've loved it because I've got to share all of my wine information um, with everybody there. And they had a killer wine list to work with. So they yeah. have Italian wine. Um, what kind of steps? So you guys are open for dine in and take out? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we are open for dine in and take out. We do indoor and outdoor dining. So we just set up an outdoor dining space um, that has about six tables and it can um, probably seat around 30 people um, cool. as well as our normal patio. So we do have a patio as well that's reservable or you can just kind of come and see if there's a spot available. But we're also doing indoor dining too. So Perfect. about 50% capacity, but we still have plenty of tables. Awesome. So it's reservations are recommended. They're highly, they're highly in encouraged, yes. Um, okay. However, if you show up, we will definitely do everything we can to try and get you in. Awesome. And you guys are at 50% capacity yeah, with- Inside. Um, yes, and then we, we've definitely spaced out our outdoor tables um, to give everybody a little bit more room. Um, so every table is about eight feet apart. So we went a little bit farther than the six feet. Um, there are little changes to traditional service. So we don't get uh, as up close and personal to you, but everyone will be wearing masks and gloves um, and everything is sanitized multiple times a day. Perfect. I love that. Um, you guys are one of my favorite restaurants in Chapel Hill. I was telling you this before we went live, um, but you're our special occasion uh, restaurant and also our bring our out of town friends um, to eat. And it's really convenient because I actually am local to Chapel Hill. So it's not a drive for me at all, but um, I love you guys. Um, so we are here because you're going to walk me through a virtual wine tasting. Can you tell me more about... I guess we can start with how we do virtual wine tastings. Like how does it look for sure. who are interested? Um, so we offer this package through uh, Il Palio. You can just go to ilpalio.com and click on our packages link. Um, it's $45 and it can be as long as you want with as many people as you want. You just have to come and pick up the wine and the tasting notes. And it's normally about uh, 30 minutes to an hour session uh, with me walking you through the steps of how to blind taste wine and then the deductive tasting method through the court of master sommeliers. Oh, 
Fancy. Uh, I have another question. You sparked sure. curious. Um, so mm -hmm. if I were to book a small wine tasting with you guys, mm -hmm. how do you, do you price it per person? And then how do you pick up the wine or how does it work with, in terms of? So it's a $45 uh, dollar flat fee. Um, okay. And then you uh, just come by and pick up the wine. So it, uh, the price is per bottle. Gotcha. Uh, and it can be up to 12 people through Zoom. So uh, Zoom just doesn't let you do more than 12, but you could definitely squeeze everybody in. Yeah. I can just only do 12 computers. Okay. Awesome, that sounds <laughs> so fun. What a before. creative way to socially distance and act actually bring some like fun date ideas or group ideas. Um, so I love that that concept. It's been, it's been really fun. We do, a, we do a lot of date nights and a lot of uh, family things too. Perfect, so. awesome. Okay, well, I'm gonna let you take it away. Sure, sure. Um, so we'll be going through the deductive tasting method through the Court of Master Sommeliers. So um, I'm a certified sommelier, so I do a lot of blind tastings. Uh, but there are five steps. It is uh, sight, nose, palate, um, kind of secondary palate, determining the structure, and then your conclusion. Um, so the first thing that you will need is a bottle of wine. Today we are going to be tasting the Papalo. It's a 2016 Toscana Rosa. So it's a super Tuscan. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing we'll need is a clean glass. And then I prefer like a white piece of paper just to kind of look um, at the wine over the light. So we can go ahead and pour it um, and feel free to swirl it around, kind of aerate the wine, um, but don't taste it yet. We have to smell it first. Okay. Um, okay. So I always like to swirl the wine a little bit. Um, and then I like to look at it, um, look at it over the light onto a white piece of paper. So the first thing is determining the color. Um, you know, is it ruby? Is it purple? Is it garnet? Um, and this wine is definitely ruby. So it's not as dark as uh, purple, which would be some Malbecs. And it's not as light as a garnet, which might be for a uh, Pinot Noir. Um, the next thing you kind of look for is the concentration and the viscosity. Um, and I would say this is a uh, medium concentration wine because if I take my hand and I put it underneath the wine, I can't really see the difference between my fingers. But if mm -hmm. I was wearing some jewelry, I might be able to see that. All right. For my ring. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's kind of hard to see exact details, but you can see like rings or anything shiny. So the next thing you do is you give it a smell. Um, and that's just a, a really long sniff, uh, but you don't want to overwhelm your olfactory bulb. Oh, Jordan. <laughs> mine's all great. Jordan says um, it matches my lips. And you know, I did that on purpose. <laughs> I never wore lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. It's a gorgeous color. What would you describe this smell as? Um, so it's definitely got some fruit notes. So when we're smelling red wine, we try to go for red fruit, black fruit, or blue fruit. Okay. Um, so I would say this has got some black fruit notes for sure. Um, like blackberry, black cherry, um, some black plum, and then maybe a little bit of red fruit as well. So red cherry, maybe some crushed raspberry. How long did it take you to build up the, the nose skill? <laughs> Well, that was, that was probably the hardest part. Um, I smelled a lot of things, so I would constantly be smelling my shampoo and be like, oh, this is lavender. I would get some uh, um, looks at the grocery store because I would pick up all the fruits and be like, oh, this is orange, this is an apple. I wouldn't do that I now. It's not very cannot special. imagine. Oh, yeah. Let's <laughs> do that. I don't recommend that. <laughs> I can't imagine how long it would take for you to develop that defined sense of smell. Like, I, if you were to ask me to describe the smell of this, I'd say it smells like mm. wine. <laughs> yes. People, people always go, grapes. And I'm yes. like, yes, you're right. <laughs> it is grapes. So yeah. yes, it's, this is grapes, you said? This is grapes. This is definitely, definitely crushed grapes. Um, okay. Another thing I smell is wet earth. So that's a minerality component. Okay. Um, so kind of like uh, fresh potting soil, but maybe after, you know, you just pot a plant and then it rains outside. So that kind of wet, yeah. uh, wet earth smell. Um, and then a little bit of oak I get in this as well. And oak is those sweet notes. So vanilla, chocolate, baking spices. I get a little bit of vanilla with this as well. Awesome. Um, and now we get to taste it. So cheers. Thank cheers. you so much for having me on. Woo. Thank you for joining me. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna take another sip. 
pardon me. Mm-hmm. I always sip my wine and I have to go work the night shift. So <laughs> I don't want to have the whole glass. Oh, this wine is so good. It's one of my favorites. It's so smooth. So, it is really smooth. That's what I love about this wine. Um, and it's it's a really great Italian wine because Italian wine normally has a really high amount of acid. So people who are used to drinking American wine tend to not like Italian wine that much. But um, this has lower acid and it has a ton of fruit. So people who are used to drinking warm climate Cabernet Sauvignons out of like Napa or Argentinian Malbecs tend to love, love this wine. And I do too. I have another question for you. I'm a wine newbie. I drink wine, but I don't do it with intention and with curiosity. But how long do you think that, how long do we leave the wine sitting in the glass before we take our first sip for it to be Mm. the most delicious? So it depends. With a lot of white wines, you can just pour and go. Um, With red wines, I would say about 30 minutes. So a long time. So when you go to a restaurant, you should mm-hmm. have the wine poured before you get your orders taken. <laughs> or at least decant it, yes. Or at least oh, decant yeah. it, okay. because when you aerate it through the decanter, um, it'll allow the the wine to interact with the oxygen um, and it'll release more, release more smells. Yes, so as long as it's moving around. Uh, when I was in college, I used to put wine in a blender before I drank it, and people thought I was crazy, but it really tastes so much better afterwards. But I wish I, I knew you in college. <laughs> I was a weirdo. People were like, what is she doing? I'd be like, it tastes better, I promise. <laughs> I would, uh, yeah, I wish I knew you in college. I just come over with my blender. <laughs> yes. I bring the bottle, you bring the blender. Uh, I wouldn't do this with the this wine though. So okay. it's a little bit more delicate, a little bit more structured than the Woodbridge cab I got at the yeah. gas station. <laughs> um, but it is delicious. And uh, you know, we we opened the bottle before this began. So even that simple taking oh, yes, out the cork just gave it some time to relax. You know, it'd been the bottle about four years. So it just needed to to hang out a little bit. Awesome. Yeah. So um, how do you guys curate your wine? We do um, by the glass or by the Cortino. So we do uh, either five ounce or eight ounce pours. And then we do uh, bottle prices as well. If you are doing a tasting, um, we definitely don't charge you the the bottle price. Um, So it's just a little bit more of a retail margin to take home the bottles. And it's Mm -hmm. already um, your wine um, list. It's already curated by somebody else. Or do you guys so handpick everything? We, we handpick everything. So, and it's, it's mostly me um, and you know, some of my, uh, some of our servers as well. Um, so we taste a bunch of wines through a bunch of distributors, mainly Italian, and pick our favorites to share with you. So this one in particular is imported <laughs> through Baco Selections. Um, so God of Wine. Um, and he actually discovered this wine and is the sole importer. So nobody else sells this wine besides Baco. Oh, and we wow. are the only people that sell it by the glass, which is very exciting. That is very special. Lauren says that she has a new use for her Vitamix. <laughs> yes, uh, exactly. Exactly. Yes. That's Make it taste so much better. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I interrupted your... Oh, no worries. Um, we So we can go on to the next step, which would be the second evaluation of the palate. Um, so we're looking for structure. We're looking for acid. We're looking for tannin. Um, so tannin is the residual stem and skins and seeds that are in wine. So when you press all the wine down, um, the, the smaller the grape, the more of the skin to juice ratio and the more tannic a wine becomes. Um, However, this is a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, which are both really big, really fat, really juicy grapes. So there is not going to be a ton of tannin in this wine, which is good. People um, who like tannic wines tend to like uh, Nebbiolo or Pinot Noir or other like very tiny grapes. And they tend to pair better with food because um, the the fat and food um, can kind of soak up that tannin. Gotcha. But this is just a great wine that you can drink on your own. <laughs> you don't need the food. For this one. <laughs> you don't need you don't need food for this wine. It's just delicious. <laughs> well, this is awesome. I mm-hmm. agree. I'm pretty pleased good. even without my pasta. <laughs> oh, good, good. I'm glad. <laughs> that being said, if you do want to pair it with food, there are some foods that would pair exceptionally well with this wine. So. Yeah. 
Um, my favorite is our pappardelle bolognese. We make our own um, bolognese sauce, which has uh, pork and beef and veal, and it's uh, our own chicken stock as well. And tomatoes are notoriously very high in acid, so you need a moderate high acid, normally an Italian wine, to pair with it as well. So I I've had that dish, and it's delicious. Oh, isn't that so it. good? Yeah. So much. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, I, uh, <laughs> I know. I was about to say, man, I wonder if they're cooking it back there right now. <laughs> so you can definitely come in tonight, and we'll be serving the Papa Deli Bolognese, Perfect. and we'll be serving this wonderful Papalo Cabernet Sauvignon to go with it as well. Perfect. Another thing we can look for is acid, and that is the, um, it's kind of the feeling of, you know, salivation under your tongue. So that, um, all depends on the climate in which the wine is grown. Normally Italian wine is a little bit of a cooler climate, so it's higher in acid. Um, however, this wine is on the Bulgari coast, which is really sunny. It's a south facing slope, so it doesn't have a ton amount of acid. I would say it has moderate acid. Yeah, <laughs> I agree, I agree what she said. <laughs> like, I know, I know. <laughs> mm. Mm. I love it. I know. I wish I wish I could drink this entire glass. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, based on all of our conclusion on our sight, our nose, our uh, two uh, kind of palate distinctions, the, the fruit and the structure, we can determine that this wine is from a warm climate because the uh, grapes are a little bit warmer. There's not as much acid, that it's a bigger grape that's probably thinner skinned because it's not too tannic. Um, and then because of the ruby color, we can probably guess that it's like Cabernet Sauvignon or Merlot. Um, it's not gonna be something like a, a Malbec or a Shiraz. So, you know, we can call this wine a Toscana Rosso because it has some of the five French Bordeaux varietals, um, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Malbec, Petit Bordeaux, um, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Petit Verdot, and Malbec, but it's grown in Tuscany. So this is a super Tuscan. Um, although I would say if I was tasting this wine, it would have been a hard call because it's so delicious. I am. Um, I'm so impressed by you right now. <laughs> I just like wine, right? I it's cannot just... imagine like all the education and all the wines you had to drink to be able to speak the way you do. <laughs> It wasn't, it wasn't hard. The drinking wine wasn't hard. It was, it was <laughs> studying the French varietals that was hard. But Do you have a favorite? A favorite wine? Yes. Right now I'm very into natural wine. Um, and it's probably because I'm just drinking so much of it that I'm like, hmm, sulfite free. That sounds like less hangovers. But uh, wines from Sicily are very cool right now. Um, so... I like Sicilian wines because they tend to be natural. And then uh, there's some wines from Sicily that are grown on the slopes of Mount Etna, which is an active volcano. So they taste very cool. But uh, if I go into a, a wine bar or wine shop, I'm always looking for something I haven't tried before. I like mm -hmm. it. Can you tell us what makes, makes a wine natural? Is it without the sulfites, you said? There are lots of ways, um, you know, if you use 100% organic grapes, you can also do biodynamic, biodynamic winemaking, um, which involves really like low intervention. So you don't, um, you use native yeast. So you just let the grapes ferment on their own instead of adding additional yeast. And then the amount of sulfites added before bottling. Um, however, a lot of, uh, a lot of European wines um, are going to have sulfites because they're shipped across the ocean and it's just very hard to keep them that way um, without adding some preservative. Awesome. I'm learning so much from you today. <laughs> well, you should do, you should do a, uh, an online wine class and you can learn a little <laughs> bit more. Oh yeah. Um, for your wine classes, is it everyone taste one, one wine and learn more about it, like what we're doing now, or is there it's really structured depending on what the individual wants. So we can do just one wine. If someone wants to do 10 wines, we can do 10 wines too. Oh my gosh. If someone wants <laughs> to do uh, three wines from a specific region. If someone wants to do all sparkling, all rosés, it really just depends and it's all catered. So you mm -hmm. customize it per? Yes, yes. Oh, um, we do work off of our list, so it'll probably be all Italian wine. Mm -hmm. um, so if someone came to me and they're like, oh, I really want to learn about French wine, I would be like, I'm not your girl right now, but... Right. Uh, Italian wine, definitely. Um, 
I am imagining people signing up for this and not only that, but maybe you can like, I don't know if you guys already do this, but clue them in and what kind of takeout they should <laughs> oh, buy yes, from yes. you guys <laughs> so they because can eat what they're frying. And then if you're drinking like the Italians drink, you have to have some Italian food as well. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any excuse to eat Italian. <laughs> yes. Um, I have another question. I'm just like firing all these questions at you. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you are like me and you're a lightweight and it's just mm -hmm. by yourself, like you don't have the means to finish a bottle, how mm -hmm. long does a bottle of wine, like what's the shelf life after you open? Um, for a red wine, I would say the shelf life is five days, but if you put it in the fridge, it'll last a little bit longer. And if you put it in the fridge, I'm guessing you have to take it down a little closer to room temperature once you, once you take it out for maximum. Yes. Taste. Um, so the, the prime temperature is around 64 degrees. So normally, um, a wine will come out of the fridge around like 50, 45 degrees. Um, so you have to kind of let it sit a little bit, um, but it'll definitely last longer. Awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Did I did I cut you off for any of your other teaching? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, this has been a tremendous amount of fun. I think that I've talked about the main tasting notes of this wine and some of the clear deductive tasting formats for it. I um before you leave, I have more questions. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> what are some tips for some newbies like me on embarking on a wine education besides booking mm -hmm. wine tastings with you guys like is there anything people can do personally when they when they go out to eat when you can't ask your your okay. always get go for what they recommend um and let listen to them talk about it um go to lo your local wine shops and talk to them um and then uh my my go-to teaching method is always um whenever you are whenever the sommelier pours you a little taste and you have to smell it Make sure you twirl it like this, mm -hmm. give it a go, and then you say, okay, or, or not okay. But how um, someone twirls and smells the wine is a good indicator of how often they've been around wine. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So you can fake it a little bit before you make oh. it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and, and everyone's faking it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, there's just so much to learn about wine that no one can possibly know it all. <laughs> that is so comforting to hear. Um, I think I already am feeling the effects of the wine because I already lost <laughs> my train of thought. I had another question for you, but you might be scared. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Come see me at Opalio. Yeah, um, I'm wait. there almost every single day, and I would love to taste wine with you in person at your table. Um, we have tasting sheets available, and then book a wine, uh, book an online wine tasting. Um, I would love to talk with all of you. Do you guys have um, a calendar in case anyone wants to hop on a, any pre-scheduled tastings or this is all custom? This is this is pretty much all custom. Um, if you are interested in hopping on, feel free awesome. to uh, just give us a call. Um, and if you're coming in, I'm happy to come out and talk to you. Perfect. What a great idea. I love it. It's a way to make your quarantine life a little bit more exciting and educational. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, That's the best part. <laughs> Thank Cheers you so much. You. Yeah. Cheers to everybody. So I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Annabelle and maybe it will inspire you to see if there's any restaurant around that does a virtual wine tasting um, that you can partake in. So if this inspires you to try something new this week, I would love to hear about it. Comment down below. Um, please give a like and subscribe if you made it this far. It really helps little newbie channels like mine grow. Um, I am excited to see you next week. I hope you have a great week. Bye!